Hey, are those pesky insects and other varmints bothering you? You have come to the right place. Solutions has the solution to your problem. Hey, my name's Keith McCoy. I'm with Solution Self Chem. If you're a do-it-yourselfer like myself, hey, you've come to the right place. We have the answers to your problem. So you're interested in making pool care simple? I've got four easy tips that may help you with that. One is water chemistry. Two, water filtration. Three, water circulation. And four, cleaning. Testing pool water is very simple. Here we have a basic four test kit. This test kit uses liquid reagents. We can test for chlorine, pH, alkalinity, and acid demand. First thing we want to do is we want to go to the deep end of the pool. We want to take our test vial. We can go down about 18 inches, pull up our sample water, and we're going to test for pH first. You want to fill the water to the top line. Take one drop of number four solution. Swirl. Take five drops of number two solution. Place our cap over the top and we want to mix. Hold the vial up to the light, match your color sample to the color chart, and that is what your reading is for your pH. Typically, your pH reading should be anywhere between 7.4 and 7.6. If we're too high, we're gonna do what's called an acid demand test. By doing an acid demand test, that will tell us exactly how much acid to add to the water to bring it down to neutral. We'll take solution number three and we'll add one drop at a time until we get a color change that will match right between 7.2 and 7.6. Keeping count of the number of drops, you'll then go to a chart which will tell you exactly how many gallons or how many pounds of dry acid to add to the water to get to that neutral point. Now we're gonna do chlorine. Do the same thing, we're gonna go down 18 inches, pull up our sample water, Fill our test water up to the top line. We're going to use five drops of solution number one. As you see, we get a color change, which is good because that tells us there's chlorine present in the water. Cap it. Turn it. Match your, match your color sample water to your color chart, and that is what your chlorine reading is. We're looking for a chlorine reading of somewhere between 1.5 and 3 parts per million. If it is too low, then we're going to need to add chlorine to the water. If it's too high, just back off the chlorine demand and it'll go down eventually. Next we want to do our alkalinity test. Again, we're going to go down, get our sample water. This time we're going to fill the larger vial to the bottom line. We're going to add one drop of solution number four. And we're going to add one drop of solution number five. It's going to turn a blue purple color. We're going to swirl to mix. We're going to take solution number three. We're going to add one drop at a time, keeping count of the number of drops until we get a color change. You want to swirl the mix after each drop. Once you get a color change, this turn to yellow. You want to take the number of drops, multiply by 10, and that would be your alkalinity reading. On gunite pools, we really would like to have an alkalinity reading of anywhere between 80 and 120 parts per million. On vinyl or fiberglass pools, we're looking for anywhere between 125 and 150 parts per million. Once you've completed that, you can discard of that. And that's it. To clean your pool manually, you'll need a vacuum pole, a vacuum head, and a vacuum hose. What we're going to do, we're going to take the skimmer lid off the skimmer, pull the skimmer basket out, 
We're going to connect our vacuum head to the pole. On your vacuum hose, you have one end that swivels and one end that doesn't. Take the swivel end, attach that to your vacuum head. Hang on to your pole and gently drop the vacuum head into the pool. Run your vacuum hose at a vertical position into the water. This way the vacuum hose gets actually siphoned. Once your hose is completely siphoned with water, take it, feed it through the skimmer opening, and you want to plug it in to the back hole of your skimmer. At that point, you should have suction on your suction hose. Once you have your hose hooked up into the skimmer, then you're ready to vacuum. It's a simple process, and you just want to take your time, just move slowly across the floor of the pool, just like you're vacuuming the floor inside your home. If you move too fast, some of the dirt and stuff may kick up on you. So just make sure you go slow. Back and forth. Next, we're gonna brush the pool. There's two types of brushes. One's a poly brush, has poly bristles on it. Another is a stainless steel wire brush. In most cases, you'll use the poly brush. Stainless steel wire brush would be used for heavy algae or something like that that needs to come off the walls. We're gonna take our brush, attach it to our pole, drop the brush into the pool. In most cases, you'll need to extend your pole And you're gonna take your brush and you're gonna start at the tile line. And you're gonna make nice, smooth, even strokes all the way down the wall, down to the curvature of your pool. You're gonna go all the way around your pool. And once completed, then you can brush the bottom of the pool. When you brush the bottom of the pool, again, you wanna start at the curve of the pool and you wanna make long, smooth strokes, pushing everything towards the main drain. This way it gives you a better opportunity for the filter to take some of that debris out of the pool. To pick up debris off the surface of the pool, we're going to use a skimmer net. The skimmer net attaches to the end of your pole, just like your brush did. Dip your net down into the water, and you just run it right across the surface of the pool. That way you pick up all the debris, and then discard. Water circulation is super important. One thing we want to keep in mind is that your primary water source to your pump comes from the skimmers. So what we want to do is make sure that our skimmer basket stays clean and free of debris. If not, then you'll starve your pump of water. Also, we want to take a look at our pump. Of course, our primary source for our pump is our skimmer and main drain. So what we want to do, if debris is not caught in the skimmer basket, it'll be caught in this strainer pot on the front side of our pump. What we want to do is take and make sure that we turn the pump off, take our filter lid, remove it, remove the basket, and clean all the debris from inside. Place your basket back in, replace the lid. and you want to turn your pump back on. Sometimes it may be necessary that you actually fill the strainer pot with water prior to putting the lid back on. If you need to do that, do it really fast. Squirt your water in there, fill the strainer pot up, put the lid on, turn the system on. These pumps are not self-priming, so sometimes you have, to, you have to help the prime out. Pool care made simple. We've cleaned our pool, we've checked the filtration, We've looked at the circulation of the pool. We've checked the water chemistry. We've done everything we need to do. You know, 30, 45 minutes a week on your pool will give you a nice, beautiful pool that the kids and you can enjoy. I'm Keith McCoy with Solutions Self-Chem. Ask us how, then do it yourself.